Hi everybody, Dr. Jason W. Morrison on the fourth installment of Aaron's letter uh, out Jehovah Witness trying to reach to the end Jehovah Witnesses and her family. It's been an interesting journey, had a busy, busy day today. We've just built the hard drive in the computer and done a whole heap of other stuff, just had the grandson leave, um, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I want to just thank everybody um, for their comments. I want to thank Aaron for the letter in the first place. I think all of us together as a collective group, we're getting a lot out of this. Um, it's a privilege to be able to read it, isn't it? So let's continue, shall we, on Aaron's letter. Now, I want to come down to here. We left off with Aaron mentioning the Bereans, and she says, why did, why did or would Jehovah go to great lengths to have the Bible written and then preserved for almost 2,000 years after Jesus returned he from heaven, only to wait another 2,000 years to publish truths for his people through a faithful and discreet slave. We'll get to the faithful and discreet slave at the end. The faithful and discreet slaves, anyone who believes that in Christ's finished work and does makes a contribution towards it. And then, and then every so often he has to clarify a truth after we've spent decades teaching one thing and then have to teach it another way. Why wouldn't his spirit give the complete truth? Well, he he did. I ask myself this because I know what the Jehovah. I know that when Jehovah would give prophecies about the coming seed, which is um, a subject in itself about Christ, the prophecy. Oh, the coming. Now I get it. The coming seed. Speaking of Christ, the good news of Christ. I get it now, Aaron. The the prophecy were correct the first time. Yes. There was never having, they were never going to have to correct the previous prophecy. So I began to examine what the Bible says about the good news and so on and so forth. But let's just put in a video now of the false 1975 prophecy where the Jehovah Witness organization, governing body, tried to blame the people for believing a prophecy in a direction that they gave. And they said it was the people's fault for believing it. That's how evil that organization is. Here we are. Saying some were looking to a certain date, depending on the end of the system of things, but it was the date that the Jehovah Witness Watchtower Society gave them. Now, the guy that I've got this video off, I'll put his link at the bottom of the page, puts some stuff in here. I think it's brilliant. Not a certain date, 1975, although they stated it. Um, let's just pause. Oh, I missed that bit. Hang on. A date for the end of the system. Now, where did some get that idea from? Exactly. Let's take a quick look at what the organization as God's sole channel for mankind was teaching at that time. Good stuff, mate. This is what Aaron's talking about. Okay, let's pause it. Um... This is all that study stuff that they put out. Date of man's creation at four, which is nonsense, according to his, to this trustworthy Bible chronology, 6,000 years ago from man's creation, will end in 1975. And the seventh period of a thousand years of human history will begin in the fall of 1975 CE. Life everlasting in freedom of the sons of God, 1966, page 29. And it's there in black and white, isn't it? Just... They lied. They out and out lied. Let's pause this again. Why are you looking forward to 1975? Question mark. It is a time when one should be keenly aware that the end of the system of things is rapidly coming to its violent end. Make no mistake, it is sufficient for the Father himself knows both the day and the hour. Let nothing slow you down or cause you to tire and give out. Those who will flee Babylon and the sa da da da, -da um, and they will not stop at 1975 i know they will keep on in this glorious way that it's to me that's just comical garbage so aaron says why did Je would jehovah go to great lengths to have a bible written and then preserved for almost 2000 years after jesus returned from heaven only to wait those 2000 years to publish truths for this for his people through a faithful and discreet slave and then every so often he has to clarify a truth after we've spent decades teaching one thing and then have to teach it a new way. Why wouldn't his spirit give the complete truth? Well, he did, didn't he? These people just couldn't work it out. 
I ask myself this because I know that when Jehovah would give prophecies about the coming seed, which is in Genesis and other parts of the Bible, we won't go there, um, the prophecies were correct the first time. There was never having to correct, a, yeah, there, he never had to correct any previous ones. So it began to examine, she began to examine what the Bible says about the good news, since it says at Matthew twenty four fourteen, and this good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. And we say as witnesses that proves we have the truth, that we are fulfilling prophecy. Well, they can say that, but they're not the only ones. Um, I've got this up. Where is it? Let me find it. Matthew 24. Who is the faithful and wise servant? Verse 45. Who his master made ruler over his household. Now, this is just a parable to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. It's not an exclusive passage. It's not to an exclusive person. It's just to an active person or group of people. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all good things. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of. Well, that's going to happen anyway, isn't it? And will cut him off in two and point him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, there will be if you get left behind, won't there? But um, I'm not sure where they've come up with the idea that they're the faithful and wise servant because they're not wise and they haven't been faithful. Time's proven that, hasn't it? So, my goodness me, let's go back to the letter. Wow, that organisation's so deceived. Um, um, and witness prove that we have the truth. In it. So I typed those two words into the search on the JW app. This is what comes up about the good news. Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he declared to him the good news about Jesus. That's right. Yep, that might have been, was that the Ethiopian eunuch? Dunno, can't remember. He sent out the word to the sons of Israel to declare to them the good news of peace through Jesus Christ. Yep, that is the good news. This is the one Lord of all. Acts 11.20 However, some of the men among them, among from Cyprus and Cyrene, came to Antioch and began talking to the Greek speak. King people declaring the good news of what? The Lord Jesus Christ. Pretty good, Aaron. Acts 13.32 So we are declaring to you the good news about the promise made to the forefathers, which was the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 9.12 If other men have this rightful claim over you, do we not have it much more so? Nevertheless, we have not made use of this right, but we are enduring all things, so that we might not in any way hinder the good news about who? The good news about the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians 2.12 Now when I arrived in Troas to declare the, what? Good news about who? The Lord Jesus Christ. And a door was opened to me in the Lord. Second Corinthians 4.4 4, Among whom the God of this system of things has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Not only has he blinded the mind of um unbelievers he's also blinded the mind of these believers so that the illumination of the glorious good news about who the glorious good news about the lord jesus christ who is the image of god um second corinthians nine thirteen. through the proof that this relief ministry gives they glorify god because you are submissive to the good news what about the lord jesus christ wow this is unreal second corinthians ten fourteen. Um, we really we are not overextending ourselves as if we did not reach you for we were the first to reach as far as you with what with the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ second Corinthians eleven four. for as it is if someone comes and preaches a Jesus other than the one we preached or you received a spirit other than what you received or good news other than what we accepted you easily put up with him which is terrible because it was about the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians eleven seven. 
Or did I commit a sin by humbling myself that you might be exalted because I gladly de declared the good news of God? Now, what's the good news of God? It's the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it? Galatians 1.6 I'm amazed that you are so quickly turning away from the one who called you with Christ's undeserved kindness to another sort of good news. And the good news here was anything you think you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad it's going to help you to be right with God, which was a lie. It's the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 1.16 To reveal his son through me so that I might declare the good news about him to the nations. The good news of what? The finished work of Christ. 1 Thessalonians, uh, Ephesians 1.13 But you also hoped in him after you heard the word of truth, which was the good news about your salvation in who? The Lord Jesus Christ. And after you believed, you were sealed by means of him with the promised Holy Spirit. So if you believe, you've got the Holy Spirit, haven't you? Uh, Thessalonians 1.27 Only behave in a manner worthy of the good news of what? the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, and so on and so forth. Well, so that whether I come and see you or I am absent, I may hear about you and learn that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one soul, striving side by... Now, with one spirit. I didn't think the Jehovah Witnesses had a spirit. Well, they have here. With soul, striving side by side for the faith of the good news of what? The good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 2.8 So having tender affection for you, we were determined to impart to you not only the good news of God, which is what? The good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it? Um, 1 Thessalonians 2.9 the, the, Where they preach the good news of God. 1 Thessalonians 3.2 They sent Timothy, our brother in God's ministry, and the good news about what? The good news about the Lord Jesus Christ. To make you what? To make you firm. That's why many people are unstable, because they don't know the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to make matters worse, they don't want to. Second Thessalonians 1.8 In the flaming fire he brings vengeance on those who do not know God and to those who do not obey what? The good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now how do you obey the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ? By loving your neighbour as yourself, don't you? Second Timothy 2.8 Remember that Jesus Christ was raised up from the dead and was David's offspring according to the good news I preach. Which he was a, he was a descendant of David, wasn't he? And David wasn't an angel either, was he? He was a murderer. But in the days when the seventh angel is, this is Revelation 10, 7, about to blow his trumpet, the sacred secret that God declared as good news to his own slaves, the prophets, is indeed brought to a finish. The good news of what? The good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what do these scriptures indicate? The good news is the good news about the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4 specifically tells us what the good news is. For among the first things I handed on to you was what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, yes, and that he was raised up on the third day according to the scriptures. Christ died, was buried, and then resurrected. That is not the good news I'm taught about at the meetings. To preach in our ministry, that get preached in the ministry. Instead, we preach that Jesus didn't become king of God's kingdom until 1914. Now, isn't that a load of nonsense? Now we're on to the 1914 that these people like Aaron got taught. Horrible lies. Horrible, deceitful lies. And at that time, he returned invisibly, and then, and that is when the last days began. That is different good news than Paul taught. It sure is. There is no record anywhere in the Bible where Paul taught to watch for a good news to arrive on the scene that said Jesus would return invisibly in 1914. I don't even know why the Watchtower made that up. Like, why would you make something so stupid up? And if it was wrong, why wouldn't you just admit it, that it was wrong? I'll tell you why, because the guy Charles Taze Russell knew, the Millerite, they bashed him up. It ruined his organisation, and Russell wasn't going to have that, was he? And neither was Rutherford. It does say at Galatians 1, 6 through 9, I am amazed that you are so quickly turning away from the one who called you with Christ's undeserved kindness to another sort of good news. Not that there any, is any other good news, but there are certain ones who are ca causing you trouble and wanting to distort the good news about Christ. However, even if we are an angel out of heaven, we 
too declare to you as good news something beyond um, if we declare to you something beyond the good news we dec declare to you let him be a curse now Paul lost his way a little bit there I have to say because Jesus said not to curse anybody but this is how angry Paul was about these people that were trying to make people think that there was something they had to do or not do on top of what Jesus did to make God happy or stop him from being sad. There's nothing you can do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. All you can do is believe what Jesus did and then get on with your life. So simple, isn't it? But, but so difficult. Um, now where are we? Here, back at Aaron's letter. 15 minutes. As we have said before, I now say again, who's, whoever is declaring to you as good news, um, something beyond what you accepted, let him be accursed. Can you see how I'm troubled, guys? I don't want to be accursed on my children. And Paul very clearly says that if we teach a good news beyond what Paul declared, we will be accursed. Yes, um, cursed in the sense of all that all that you, when you try and do something to make God happy or stop him from being sad, will do is turn you evil. And we need to back that up with the scripture. I'll just finish this. This is a life and death matter. This involves my eternal future and my children's. So let's see what Paul meant when he said that. Now I can't go into detail, but I will give you an overview of Romans 7 and why... It's so dangerous to think we can do or not do things to make God happy or stop him from being sad. Um, it says here, for when we were in the flesh, that's under the law. Now the law by definition is anything we think we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad is a law. And this is why there's so much trouble in religious organizations because there's nothing you can do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. Yet so many religious organizations are built on the principle that if you do this, God will, you know what I mean? It's all related to your works, but it's dangerous. And I'm showing you something that everybody needs to know. For when we were in the flesh, under the law, the sinful passions which were aroused by the what? Now what are these sinful passions aroused by? And I want you to say it. I want you to comment. What are sinful passions aroused by? What? By the law. Anything you think we need to do, or I need to do, to make God happy or stop him from being sad is a law. How many people are running around thinking they're doing something or not doing something to make God happy or stop him from being sad? How many? Because guess what they're doing? All they're doing is arousing they're sinful passions. Now I hope that's making the hair on the back of your neck stand up because this is the answer to all these religious organization problems. And this is why it's dangerous because the sinful passions which are aroused by the law at work in our members to bear fruit to what? All it can do, all your effort can do in trying to make God happy or stop him from being sad is bear fruit to death. And Romans 7 goes right into this. But now we have been delivered from the law. Now, if you're not a Jew, if you're not an Israel, uh, Israeli born under the law, what are you doing playing with the law anyway? It's got nothing to do with you. It was given to the Jews. Um, one more passage just in this, just quickly. But sin, taking opportunity, how? How? How did sin take opportunity? By the commandment. And what did it produce? It produced in him all manner of evil desire. So, whoops, hang on. We've got the grandson waking up. Hang on. So just before the grandson wakes right up, can you see how I'm troubled, guys? I don't want to be accursed. And what I just read to you is what the curse is. Anything you think you need to do to make God happy or stop him from being sad is going to produce in you and arouse in you your sinful nature. And what's your sinful nature going to do? It's going to cause you to do bad things. It's going to cause you to think bad things. It's going to cause good intending religious people to do bad things. Now, in, I would like you to read Romans 7 and see how many times it connects the power of sin with religious rules. 
religious rules of both commission and omission. When we think we need to do or not do things to make God happy or stop him from being sad, we become accursed. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia, on Aaron's Letter. Bye for now. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. If you watch it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one-off life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.